welcome uh, on my behalf as well to Arista Campus Network Solution webinar. And um, um, so my name is Marko Rantanen and I'm based here in the Helsinki office in Finland and I'm going to present the, the networking solution, so some demos. Um, and uh, uh, so let's go without further ado. Um, to, to the agenda which is here so basically i will present first uh, our both wired wired and wireless architecture um the benefits uh, cloud vision uh, management um, software for uh, network wide um, network configuration automation um we will show some um, cloud vision demo of um, of its benefits and um, a few examples how to automate or troubleshoot networks and also, um, then we are talking about zero trust and security, how to uh, use uh, our security solutions to uh, both make uh, networks uh, more secure and identify uh, potential attacks and remedies as well uh, to isolate uh, potential attack attackers in a network. And uh, there's a demo of that too in the end. Um, so. Regarding the uh, uh, the network, um, so greetings from California. I came just yesterday from California, and, and I noticed since uh, before there being last time before COVID, and uh, now we, this slide is talking about um, the network environment in, after COVID. Uh, that is it is different, and of course people are working in different places. And I noticed uh, during the weekend and early part of this week in California that something had definitely changed. Highway 101 between San Francisco and Los Angeles. I was driving a couple of times to Silicon Valley and noticed it was empty. Uh, in my career, I've been there like 25 years uh, every now and then and noticed it so many times it's always stuck and, and you can never go through that highway. This time it was empty. And um, in our office, we had one person working at the fifth floor. Everybody else was somewhere else. So people are really working somewhere else. They are not coming to the office. And that is not only what I can see here in Helsinki, I believe that in your countries as well, this is visible. Some people are on site, at least IT is on site somehow, at least they have connections to the network and everybody else has connections to the network. So the networks are different. There are, you have the on-site sites and then you have remote sites. And of course, networking has somewhat um, changed um, in general. So uh, we asked today, um, the webinar, what is that? It's like a seminar, but nobody is there. So basically, a good example of this webinar uh, concept is that people are working from um, whatever type of places. And since you can be unmuted or muted, and uh, uh, it doesn't matter, you, you could basically be even on your boat or something like that. Uh, currently, I'm in my home office, though. So. Uh, but anyway, so. Building networks, still, this is the thing that we have. This the situations might be different, vary. Um, the network consists of these building blocks, anyways. So we have um, different cloud services. We have software, we have controllers, and then we have hardware, and then we have users. And users are in different categories, and they have different characteristics in a network. How they uh, work together, how they how they should not be working together. That is part of the um, uh, the uh, the profiling and and authorization security overall and their policies so how to work with this so basically these are the things that have been there like forever but um what arista is offering is that um instead of using let's say uh perhaps more proprietary solutions arista is offering um uh, modern architectures with open standards. So all our solutions are based on open standards-based solutions. And uh, we can discuss and, uh, how the networks uh, have been built, uh, what type of solutions are currently uh, considered, and what is the Arista um, differentiator in those areas. Um, same concerning the Wi-Fi networks. Typically, the Wi-Fi uh, in enterprise class, they come with controllers and a Wi-Fi networks and their management software. There we have um, some um, some recommendations as well. Let's say um, um, evolve uh, uh, mechanisms how to build um, uh, control control of free networks uh, and and so on. Um, many of you are using anyways um, uh, Microsoft um, um, uh, authenticators, Microsoft services. Some of the other uh, services are in the cloud. Microsoft is forcing to use uh, Open uh, 
uh, Office 360 um, in the cloud. And um, so uh, there are ways, for instance, to not perhaps needing to use the uh, on-premise AD to, to do the authentication. So um, these type of integrations into uh, modern networks. And also um, since networks are sometimes quite, quite complex in terms of the different technologies used, sometimes in the networks just pure layer two, very simple, uh, quick to configure, but then you have basically no control in a network. And uh, if, you, if your network is more complex, more advanced features and technologies, those configurations can be um, somewhat headache. So Arista comes with network-wide thinking of automating the network uh, configuration based on best practices, which means that um, uh, the config models, configurations can be automated in simple workflows, not requiring everybody making changes in the network being the expert on that. So um, uh, basically you can maintain uh, with um, um, less experts in, in your uh, IT uh, operations to, to maintain a network by using best practices built in automation. And uh, um, then regarding the security, um, many of the legacy IDPs and IPSs, uh, they have uh, um, uh, fallen short in terms of um, uh, being potential bottlenecks if all the traffic needs to be forwarded through these devices and type of things, or if there's just a permit of firewall preventing traffic to go uh, in and out from the uh, enterprise network. So what are the solutions there could be to, to detect what happens inside the network, let's say, uh, instead of a north and south traffic, but also west and east traffic and, and what to do there. So Arista Campus Networking is, um, is of course, part of many, many areas. And uh, this one is here. Um, uh, basically describing how we are running around uh, uh, the different uh, areas. So first of all, um, we have a common um, architecture for uh, Wi-Fi and uh, wired, so uh, they are not like two separate islands, um, and uh, uh, built-in security into the system, both on wireless and, and wired environment, and um, uh, including encryption and also different uh, micro and macro segmentation um, uh, technologies in terms of isolating and segmenting traffic uh, in a network, uh, part of the uh, the broader view of of uh, security, um, uh, different. Uh, um, uh, troubleshooting mechanisms heavily relying on telemetry from the networks. So basically, um, Arista is not using SNMP in terms of pulling in network information. Instead, we are using um, devices sending uh, all data that they have of themselves as uh, um, uh, streaming te te uh, telemetry uh, technology so that the management system has a complete network wide view of every statistics in a network, um, which is then used to, to other uh, features like automation of the network and also, of course, risk and compliance and compliance um, uh, um, uh, reporting as well. So basically, we can follow very quickly um, an easy way, uh, life cycle management and uh, compliance, security compliance, configuration compliance um, uh, things, and of course, automate the configurations, as mentioned earlier, and I have some uh, demos of this later on. Um, Hardware-wise, Arista has a broad uh, uh, array of um, of different devices, uh, uh, different um, uh, scale and requirement uh, perspective. Uh, basically, uh, from the top, uh, those are the core devices. So basically, we are sharing the devices that we are using in a data center use and in the background routing uh, use cases um, uh, in, in the larger enterprise campus networks as well. So basically the same devices that are built in, in other networks can be used in campus network backbone networks. Basically those are um, switches and routers with uh, uh, fiber and copper optics uh, uh, interfaces scaling from very um, uh, low end uh, devices to uh, maybe the biggest routers and switches in the world. So um, um, a wide range of devices to choose, choose from. Um, in the middle, in the green area, there we have uh, devices for more um, campus access networks, which are campus uh, oriented in terms of, um, um, they are basically the same same uh, hardware as the, the above uh, core devices, but uh, modified into the capacity required and bandwidth requirements in in campus networks, they are of course PoE uh, devices. Uh, PoE is quite often needed in in the, in the campus area. So varying here from uh, 
uh, very uh, low end on the left, which is a work group switch from uh, 1624 port to 4896 port fixed configuration devices with port um, speeds varying from um, 10 meg to uh, 100 meg, 1 gig, 2.5 gig, 5 gig, and 10 gig with BOE uh, capabilities. Or then we have models without BOE if um, uh, needed, just, uh, just copper based access. Uh, and also devices with uh, BOE from 30 watt, 60 watt, and 90 watt capabilities. And also then uh, fiber um, uplinks with uh, 10 gig, 25 gig, and 100 gig. Uh, capabilities and also a product family for modular devices for um, um, even uh, further scale. Um, then for the Wi-Fi part, uh, Arista has uh, a full sweep of um, a different uh, multi-radio um, uh, Wi-Fi technology available uh, for both uh, um, indoor and outdoor use and from mass market to uh, uh, fairly large and uh, even bigger uh, enterprise use cases and um, uh, more details of these um, and further further out in the, in the presentation. Uh, in addition to um, the hardware that we have, we have software as well. We have Cloud Vision, which is our management software. That is basically a framework that can be used as an element management for managing just device by device or network wide configurations and uh, um, and, and and even full automation based on on our streaming tech, uh, telemetry technology and also in in cloud vision uh, family we have also latest um, uh, addition to the software called uh, Arista Agni that is uh, just released, I think, in uh, in April and it's started shipping now in June, which is the Arista Guardian for network infrastructure. So basically, that is our platform for uh, uh, use for um, authorization, authorization and authentication, authentication in of the uh, the users and devices in a network, and uh, um, uh, access control uh, in short way. Uh, mentioned, but which integrates into the networking part of the telemetry part, receiving information of the network, profiling uh, different um, types of, of devices uh, or end users, um, um, and then then of course pro when profiling and segmenting these uh, users uh, and and devices to uh, based on their characteristics and uh, um, where they which part of which security groups they are part of and so on allowing access based on based on these and also in integrating um, the identity management um, uh, other identity management uh, uh, and authorization um, uh, platforms on the right so um, regarding the networks that we are building um, as mentioned Arista only works with open standards we have no proprietary solutions so that means that our networks can be built together with other vendors devices we are not locking out other vendors so of course we would like to see as many as possible arista devices in a network but um, uh, the solutions that we build are always based on open standards that means that our networks work completely without any controllers you don't need to buy a controller from us you can use controllers, you can use management software, but it doesn't prevent using other systems in a network. So basically, we are that way very flexible. As mentioned, everything is based on standards. You can build the topology whatever way, whatever way you want to, but the services that we recommend, um, of course, are based on, on the best practice recommendations, but you don't have to use it that way. You can choose your own way. Um, so we are very flexible there. Uh, this slide here describes that um, um, if you build the network this way, you can choose either layer two or layer three network. You have layer three somewhere. You have layer three at least when you go out of your network to the internet or wide area network. You may have firewalls at the edge of the layer two and layer three. Your network here in below in the left side could be based on layer two um, and it's, it's using standard-based mechanisms to use spanning tree less network. So our solutions are not based on spanning tree. So there are mechanisms to use loop-free networks without using a spanning tree. You can use spanning tree if you want to, but the, the best case uh, or best practice uh, recommendations are based on, on today's standards. 
Um, in this one, this is very simple layer two network based on multiple uh, ports and uh, maybe floors or wiring clouds that's based on MLAC technology. So we are using the same technology that we have developed used um, to be used in a data center and a cloud environment. So the, uh, the same technology, not reinventing a wheel uh, to build uh, systems in the, in the uh, layer two campus networks. Our devices work also with layer three environment. It is the same device that is used in a layer two network that can be used in a layer three network. On the right side, the network is layer three. So you can build the layer three, maybe inside a wiring closet or inside your floors. Maybe that's layer two only in the floors and in a work group and everything is, else is layer three, or it can be completely layer three. And you, then even you can run eVPN and VXLAN in a campus if you want to. It is the same device. So you don't have to change devices to uh, more advanced devices in order to uh, uh, enable advanced features. So for us, it is the same software even. You don't have to even change software if you want to change from layer two to layer three. Uh, so this means that our all devices and, and the software available for those is always the same and they support all these functions. How, we, how do you choose them? And how do you choose to use them? It is just a licensing question. So basically you can license to use only layer two or layer three, or then on top of layer three, you can also use eVPN technology if so wanted. Licensing, licensing is really uh, simple for us. It is trust-based. So there are no license keys even. So you enable layer three if you want to, and we trust that you have purchased the license and it's free. Uh, it's, it's then easy to, to deploy in a network. So very easy from our perspective to support either layer two or layer three solutions. For these management wise, we have built um, um, simple workflows to support the, uh, uh, the best practice design. So if you want to deploy this type of a network and add then services on in this network, we have uh, made this very simple that people who don't know all the CLI commands to enable things and uh, uh, to enable more like uh, instead of using box by box configuration, using network wide configuration for services with simple point and click type of solutions. So here's an example of the EVPN technology that is exactly the same way as it works in a data center. It works also in a campus network and supported all our campus devices too. So I'm um, not going to any details in this one, but um, uh, the same models used in there works exactly the same way in a campus network. This, this means that you don't need a separate controller. Like I know that some, some vendors, they have different controllers for campus networks. If you want to do segmentation there, it works exactly the same way, the same technology as you could use it in a, in a data center network as well. So we are not reinventing a wheel or forcing customers to buy a um, vendor specific controller to support this. So um, from wired part to the wireless part, wireless, as everybody knows that there are um, different technologies for wireless. Uh, if you just simply buy some home user uh, targeted uh, Wi-Fi access points, they are simple, then power up and then maybe there's a web GUI to enable some SSID configuration and uh, there you go. Um, Enterprise class wireless networks, they typically use wireless controllers. Like in this picture, we have a controller and then we have the access points and then we have the users. And between the uh, access point and the controller is a tunnel. And um, so this is the typical use case and we call this legacy model. So um, since this one is, of course, it requires that you, you need to, when you upgrade, for instance, a network to next genera generation of Wi-Fi access points, you may need to upgrade your controller too, at least it's software. So it's maintenance. You have to make this, maybe this is the controller is a single point of failure. You need two of them. You need to make redundancy. And when you have redundancy there in a network, it adds complexity, et cetera, type of things. So it is expensive to maintain. It could be that you 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 must upgrade the controller too when you upgrade your access points, et cetera. So I think this is like your um, um, the, the legacy architecture here could be somewhat um, and difficult to, to evolve. Um, so there, the innovation from Arista is not to use a controller. So um, 
So then you're asking, how do you do it then? And I try to explain it here. So first of all, we have management software called Cloud Vision. That is the number one here. And number two are the access points. The access points here are a distributed control plane. So the we have the controller, but it's not a specific device. So it is distributed all over the access points. So they work together. They can listen to each other. They know that there are other access points and uh, they share information of the users and radio channels, etc., across the access points that are close enough, but they don't care about the access points that are far away. So, um, and the data, how it goes here, it is the green line, the dotted line on the left. So the, the data does not go to any management software. The management software is just the management control plane. So it controls what configurations these access points have, how the network should work. That is the, the point what, uh, what number one and number two are doing together. Number three is the data plane. That is how we send the traffic to the network. And um, um, in, in the previous slide, you saw there was a tunnel that all traffic goes to a tunnel and then to the controller and controller then decides what to do with the traffic. We also have tunnels, but they are for um, tunneling the traffic to the right segment in your network. It can be layer two or layer three tunnel. It can be a GRE tunnel or it can be a VXLAN tunnel. So you can tunnel, if you have an EVPN VXLAN network, you can tunnel your traffic from a specific user-based VLAN to a specific uh, VXLAN EVPN segment. And uh, um, it's kind of a layer two extension to, to, uh, to that user to allow it to talk to the resources in, in his own segment. So, and then of course, um, this can be across an IP network because of VXLAN is an IP technology, tunneling technology. So you can extend the layer two across the layer, uh, layer three to a remote office or at even a home office. And if that is going over a public network, you can encrypt the traffic with IPsec. So uh, very uh, quite many options there. So regarding the control plane, as I said, that we don't have control plane, but we have the distributed control plane on the access points. So the access points here, they hear their closest neighbors and they share the information they need to share between those. So in this case, AP1 in the left uh, top corner, uh, sees only AP7, AP8, and AP2 as their neighbors, and uh, no, nothing else. AP3 and so on are too far away based on the RSSI signal strength. Uh, they, they may hear them, but they see that there are others closer to. AP7 instead, uh, he will see much more access points because from AP1 to AP11, uh, those are cl uh, close enough to AP7. So AP7 will, will share more information uh, or it's the same information with more access points to allow customer, uh, users to uh, uh, roam between the access points while they are moving and so on. Uh, with this way, we can scale this very, very big without need to worry about what size of controller do we have. Is that big controller then upgraded to the latest software? Does it have redundancy? What about if you lose that one? Are we then popped out of the network, etc.? So this scales very, very large because you don't have to care about the scale of the control point because it's only a few uh, access points that are close enough. So the technology here are showing the different tunneling technologies, for instance, um, um, you can separate uh, the, the two different tunnels for different users. So you have uh, untrusted customers and trusted customers and trusted with the green line here goes to a private services and then um, uh, the uh, untrusted customer goes to um, to somewhere else like firewall and internet. Uh, this VXLAN, which is uh, uh, transporting now the untrusted customer, could be um, could be also vice versa. That the green line is the uh, the VXLAN tunnel going to to that segment where the user belongs and and so on. It's it's a completely uh, configurable uh, option. So then remote workers uh, as well and remote office, remote home office, etc. Same. Uh, security and uh, authentication uh, mechanisms that are used at the corporate side work also um, at home office 
uh, or remote office and there are the VXLAN or IP sec techno uh, VXLAN over IP sec or IP sec only uh, tunneling um, if you need to uh, if you're okay with the layer three layer three uh, connection to the network but this one allows you also to extend the layer two to home or remote office by using VXLAN uh, in, over IPsec and and also the same a mac based uh, or whatever um, um, uh, authentication mechanisms that you're using at the corporate side works also in the um, in the home office and we also have new access points uh, offering um, uh, wired ports for the user if in this case either the remote or home office is with the uh, wi-fi wi users or uh, wired uh, phone desktop phones for instance corporate phone systems etc those are supported too so um, typically Wi-Fi is something that you don't see and people, if they have problems in a network, they blame the Wi-Fi, but it's somehow um, unfair because you're blaming somebody that you cannot even see, it's invisible. So how do you tell then that the invisible network is faulty? That because of your user experience might be bad, you see that my application is much worse than with the wired connection or suddenly you don't have connection to the internet so it must be wi-fi so it could be wi-fi but it could be something else it could be the the backend services like the authentication is not reachable or dns or dhcp whatnot all services are uh, needed in order to make your connection to work the, the so for the pc and the wired and wireless network both are needed otherwise it doesn't work so it's easy to say the Wi-Fi sucks, it doesn't work, but then um, what we are offering here with Cloud Vision is the visibility in one application to see both uh, in single uh, looking class that showing that what uh, uh, what is the issue in a network if there are issues. For instance, in this case, you see I have 102 clients and uh, uh, all of them are connected to my Wi-Fi network, but four of them had authentication problem and one having a network issue so basically i have 97 green users and five users are suffering somewhat so there are easy ways to navigate them through that what could be the reason why these uh, users having problems if they have wi-fi related problems for instance the association is problem we have also um, um, ai which is a password a password not password a uh, password uh, that um, the um, uh, those uh, those funny words that they yeah, yeah everybody has machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence so what we have here is that we are using uh, artificial intelligence to intelligence to understand what are the the telemetry received information that we know from the network that what might be wrong and we also give remedy which is the suggestion that what you should need to perhaps need to do uh, in order to um, fix this problem for instance it clearly sees that the okay the network is five gig only but you, your client is using an old phone which only supports 2.4 radio so it's not possible to join or there is poor performance application performance is poor but and um, then it suggests that you you have uh, maybe maybe some um, uh, radio channel uh, configurations that you haven't um, uh, enabled all the features that are needed to um, in order to make this work better and so on so it, it understands the root cause and it also gives you guidance what to do how to configure to make this work better so um, cloud vision is our management software that does not use snmp so repeat in your mind arista does not use snmp so do we support SNMP? Yes, we support SNMP if somebody just wants to use SNMP. And uh, there might be other reasons why somebody uses SNMP to monitor the network. We support that. But our management system does not use it. Our management system uses telemetry. All devices and software we have use telemetry. Telemetry is that all information that the device knows about itself is a state. And we stream this state with telemetry to the management software. And uh, this includes everything, and it's always real time. When something is updated on a device, that update is streamed out with telemetry information. So we have, in the management system, we have a complete network-wide view of every statistics, and we collect them for 90 days. 
So we have 90 days worth history that you can go through what has happened in a network and so on. So enough of telemetry. Then provisioning. Provisioning can be done many ways. With CLI, we support that at the same time as you're using Cloud Vision or somebody else's management system, you can use them. We don't prevent using others, uh, but it's easy to choose one and use that one. So for Cloud Vision, we have built um, uh, easy to use uh, forms called Cloud Vision Studios that where we support uh, most common uh, use cases and with best practice models and designs, how it then uh, compiles the configuration needed where you only need to keep parameters like VLANs, choose devices and words and uh, IP addresses, et cetera. And then everything gets into the network. You can modify them then, of course, if you don't do uh, your configuration based on the best practices that, the, that we recommend, if you have other reasons to do it differently, they are customizable. So you can change these models to different uh, um, different uh, use cases. So it's basically the idea is that there are forms that ask questions and you answer the questions and then it pops out a config file, which is network wide. So very simple to, uh, to use. So not every network engineer needs to be an architect. Architects design these and the users then use them. The users don't need to know every command. And this is the, the, the idea here. And these models by default should be based on, on, on the uh, uh, best practice design. So there are design cards on our, uh, our support pages where you can study how these things should work. And we have made um, the, uh, uh, the studios for these day zero, day one, and day two provisioning the system. Day zero means uh, zero dust configuration. Day one is when you build out, uh, add more devices, and day two is the uh, everyday living with the, with the network. Here's an example, very simple thing where you have an MLAC cluster of two devices that you have some VLANs and users, etc. cetera. And uh, um, you just um, fill in the parameters without knowing any single CLI command. So here's a small demo of that, how it goes. And um, let's see how it works then. So um, I will um, start it and hopefully there are no problems with this. I started this video, um, so um, there's no voice. So my, it's my voice over here. So basically we are the, uh, adding a, um, um, a new new um, uh, campus board. Uh, we choose uh, what is our um, uh, campus network site, and we add a VLAN into this. So in this case, we have there is already a um, uh, MLAC pair existing with the uh, three VLANs. We add a new VLAN with the IP address needed for that segment, and and so on. So basically, that was very simple, but it includes. Um, all devices in one campus site, you choose that campus site, and then it includes that, uh, takes these uh, all devices as part of that config change, and it uh, automates the configuration. It generates real config, so, uh, but you don't have to type in these commands. So basically, there were four devices, and we added here VLAN 150 with its uh, uh, required configuration. So with this way, when you do it, and you choose, it, okay, this, it, it is this part here, or this floor, this floor has X number of devices. You, you, as a human, you typically you tend to forget to to make it exactly the same way to all devices. With this way, you can be sure that the configuration is always um, as it is validated to be in all all all, all uh, devices at the same time. It's a network wide config. It it works always exactly the same way. And it's the the reverse as well. If you want to remove this, it removes all the config from all these devices. So the end result is that you don't have any uh, config lines that are there ghosting for a um, um, number of time or, or years, and nobody knows after a few years why they are there, and 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 they they don't want to touch them because they don't know if something breaks if they remove those lines. So th this way, even though this was a simple add a VLAN and their associated configs, but then this is um, uh, just a simple simple example, but it could be very complex configuration as well. Part of the design, all these um, uh, complex config lines appear in the config automatically. So um, that 
demo i have a few other uh, demos of the cloud vision so um, the visibility is something what we uh, often uh, uh, present that the visibility is important without visibility it's management and troubleshooting is especially is a guesswork i guess we have a problem because people are complaining but where is that problem uh, how do you know that um, uh, where to look then you start then you have your network engineers they log into the boxes they use cli and uh, they try to um, find out where the pro problem might be uh, finding addresses etc takes a lot a lot of time here we are showing a few things that are based on telemetry so basically you don't have any of this information um, pulled out with snmp so telemetry is sending all this information here um, Telemetry includes, for instance, all MAC addresses or all IP addresses that you have in a network, and Cloud Vision stores them into the database. And uh, now you have a user maybe complaining that he has problems uh, with using certain application and doesn't work properly. And you can find, for instance, anything related to that user. In this case, we we were searching for that IP address 10, 10 .10 12 11 and we find that it uses this MAC address and it's actually seen by this switch. Uh, on that specific port, we see all the traffic that the user has been sending in and out and, uh, uh, and all the associated ports and uh, where it is uh, communicating. And uh, uh, we also, we see flow information of that user as well, um, the IP address, uh, where uh, that user is communicating to and we we can see um, uh, the the protocols as well regarding it and we can see it in a topology too all this is coming through uh, telemetry updates and uh, uh, no snmp based polling which is interval based polling and etc and um, this is now real time but as as i mentioned we uh, we store this data 90 days three months in in the in the database so you maybe this problem that the uh, client was uh, calling about this is something that happened yesterday you can sc scroll into that time in yesterday and see that yeah indeed yesterday the same board where the client is connected to is reporting problems in uh, dropping packets for instance there you know that you have maybe an optical or cable issue or something else so simple example what you can get uh, from visibility, visibility perspective troubleshooting as mentioned if you don't have visibility it's guesswork and guess what i will show some um, uh, show commands so basically network engineers they try to troubleshoot something with the show commands so uh, show commands show you exactly the things what happens right now in one device but with telemetry based approach you see every information of all devices. So here we have on the left a different so commands. Let's say let's call them so commands, but those are the tables that the switches uh, maintain. And uh, with so commands, you can see what's in there. And they are with so commands that that is exactly right now situation. But this is um, uh, ninety days. So you can go with any statistics back in history for 90 days with one second granularity and this one here is even so in the software processes of that switch happened like um, I don't know how many hours that that window there is but you can go with one second granularity back in 90 days and see uh, what caused the CPU uh, process to go high like two days ago and you can see exactly what process did it and uh, then you can uh, troubleshoot the uh, the uh, the things. Uh, there are many other things like MAC addresses, IP addresses, hardware tables, whatever, interface counters, anything that you need to uh, use for troubleshooting issues in a network. And you can compare different times, different devices, either, either real time or back in time, uh, history. So here you are choosing two devices and uh, then uh, trying to find out what was the problem, why they are different, for instance. And uh, um, this is something impossible to do with CLI. Uh, CLI is very good when, when things happen right now and you try to mitigate there while you're in, in behind the console. But if you try to see the trend, what has happened. So um, I think this one lasts uh, many more minutes, but um, let's uh, skip the rest of it.
not using all the fine things uh, all the time. And then um, for the Wi-Fi um, visibility uh, as well, a few examples here. Um, so basically, um, I will show here, um, this is the same what I just described that if you have any uh, reasons why some some people are having problems here, for instance, some f mobile phones not able to uh, join the network, um, you have uh, uh, incorrect uh, preset keys, for instance, or your some other handshake uh, uh, goes wrong. We can do real time packet capture as well. Um, for instance, if you, I, I have uh, demoed this many times that I purposely um, configure my password on my, my phone uh, incorrectly. And then I do packet uh, uh, capture here as well. I, I can see exactly like you were using a sniffer or something where you can remotely monitor what the what problems the user has. For instance, here, uh, the robot is, uh, here you see the robot picture. Should I look root cause for affected clients? So if you enable this one, so the, the uh, um, the robot will then uh, uh, try to find a reason for each of the users why they have problems and even giving uh, suggestions what to configure in order to uh, get rid of this problem and so on. Um, and uh, here, for instance, we have um, uh, radius re unreachable things. And um, so uh, it's showing that all uh, access points in this location, see um, um, the client with this uh, low uh, single strength or something like that. Maybe maybe it's a radio parameter issue or uh, something else. Um, jumping through here, um, we do, we have application visibility. Um, you can create your own uh, monitors for different applications, or you, the system has also predefined application visibility as well, which it does in the background, uh, checking that how the applications work. Uh, if you have any issues with them and uh, um, uh, at home, for instance, over this Zoom session, if I do it, uh, it depends if somebody else at my home is using Netflix or something at the, at the same time, I may see some some issues as well uh, in application performance. But here, for instance, the robot is saying that you have both full coverage and high retry rate and there are the signal to noise ratio is bad, for instance type of things and you get then the the resolutions latencies when i first at my home i i used the arista access point the first warning i got was was the uh the latency to my dhcp server uh was very high and uh but that that is what you get when you use raspberries uh, but anyways um so here showing a different application through the background testing you can and schedule these to be done in the background. We have three radios in our access points, and the third radio, for instance, can can use there to to log into the network and uh, mitigate being a client. So it, it works as a probe at the same time it works as an access point, and then you can uh, get the uh, application tests in the background and reports also if you had any issues. And then of course, interactive um, 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 topology floor plans where you see where your access points are located, what issues you have, which part of the network and so on. So, yeah. So then back to the slides. So how to secure the networks? Arista is known as a data center company, uh, best best known as a data center company. And uh, for some customers, it is a news that we are in campus networks. And even more customers have never heard that Arista is also a security company. So um, we don't sell firewalls. Don't come to ask us, do we have a firewall? Uh, we will send you, send you a, sell you a switch or Wi-Fi or router. And um, uh, and a security is, is part of our um, zero trust, another buzzword, zero trust um, security uh, concept where we we use the, uh, the technology that we use to build and design networks. Like how, how do we do segmentation? So typically that is every router and switch supports uh, VRFs access lists, VLANs. Um, these are the ways to segment users separate to each other. And uh, there are other met methods as well, like uh, how to how use security uh, within those segments. So how to do micro segmentation type of things as well. And then we have um, uh, understanding how the network works, like situational awareness, that is that we are profiling 
the users and what they do, their intents and uh, how they move around a network and what are their relationships. And then we have a network detection and response as well. So the traditional security is to use a perimeter firewall that is at the edge of the network. It does not protect your network between two houses in the same network. So that is, of course, the thing. And we are not part of that, that, that business. So what we do in the network, we have different methods of uh, controlling and securing the network. We're trying to um, uh, mitigate the uh, the spoofing of uh, IP addresses, MAC addresses, or somebody providing their own DHCP server in the network and attract traffic to that part of the network. So all the, I think the, everybody uh, has this because they have been a long time in a net, uh, in, in, in networking environment. The other one is um, group segmentation in addition to the VLANs and VRF and routing. Um, typically routing and, and access, they, they somehow are related to the routing concept. So this is regardless of your network is layer two or layer three. This is IP over even the uh, uh, layer two networks. So basically what it means that you can control who can talk to each other based on what are their groups. So this is group segmentation. So basically, um, let's say IoT devices like cameras, surveillance cameras, or whatever uh, IoT devices, they are IoT group. Regardless of, uh, with this, we can put them in any VLAN, in any routing domain, and uh, or they can all be in the same VLAN, and we can still limit them to con uh, to talk to each other. So for instance, if somebody attacks one camera, it cannot attack to the other cameras or other systems in the network. So with this way, understanding what the devices are, who they should be talked to, without changing the network, routing a VLAN, or forcing the traffic always to go physical, by a physical bar, firewall, you can force the uh, um, uh, traffic based on the group segmentation. This is working box by box, but with automation, you can make it network-wide, and we are not using any security tags in the package like some other vendors are doing. So this is Brownfield-friendly uh, as well. It does not uh, uh, have any any uh, manipulation of, of the headers, etc., but it still works across the network. So the, then with Wi-Fi as well, segmenting users, we uh, the previous key that that is of course the that all the Wi-Fi support, but we have also something called unique PSK, and this one you can you can give a unique PSK to a group of users or individual users, which means that they cannot talk to each others even though they are in a single VLAN. They could all share the single VLAN, but you can still do micro uh, micro segmentation to all users that you limit them uh, not able to talk to to others. Um, and this makes the configuration of the provisioning of the Wi-Fi network simple because you don't have to um, need to support multiple VLANs now. Um, other security things um, with Wi-Fi is WIPs, Wireless Intrusion Protection System. So there, um, our um, access points, we, we basically we can detect the authorized and uh, unauthorized rogue access points and neighbor access points. We don't care about the neighborhood access points. They are behind the wall. They are not in your network. But we, we, we can detect the access points that are in your network. And uh, But they are not authorized. So what we are using here, we can um, we, we are using um, a, a patented um, marker frame that we are broadcasting to the network. And if we can see it come, popping up, uh, back in a network via another access point, then we know that this access point is connected to our network. And since it is not uh, according to our policy and configuration and, and not authorized, it's a role club. And then we can also uh, identify role clients. Uh, I think there we are different than may, many others in a network. So we can block the role clients of the network as well, which means that, for instance, if I am in my network, I am first I'm connected to a, a uh, authorized access point, and then my MAC address is seen soon after connected also to uh, to the uh, um, uh, unauthorized access points then it know, the system knows that okay now this time marco is doing something bad in the network because he has an arizona access point which is not part of the corporate policy so we can we can detect this um the other thing where we're building a situational awareness of the network we have um uh, uh, the ndr solution which is the um 
are based on uh, Nucleus, which is the AI-driven um, um, system that detects and does the profiling and, and uh, uh, follows what happens in a network. And then we have AVA sensors. Um, AVA sensors are um, either physical uh, devices collecting traffic, uh, mirror traffic. So they may not be on, an, an, they are not in a path of data path. So they are collecting mirror traffic or those sensors can be built into the switches. So you don't need to buy any physical um, uh, sensors if not, not wanted, and then do uh, uh, threat hunting in a network. So basically, this is a high-level architecture. We support cloud IoT data centers on campus, and then we have this either uh, cloud or on-premise based nucleus, which then uh, does the uh, uh, threat hunting and situational awareness, awareness, uh, uh, kind of understanding the uh, the building, the entities, and profiling who are what and what they do and how they normally. Uh, uh, communicate and and who they communicate with and uh, also understanding any changes there so basically this thing means that um, in in addition to the firewall uh, etc uh, we recommend using um, uh, probes in a network uh, or in this case these uh, sensors and uh, you can have like one or many where you mirror the traffic to be to to be uh, then uh, extracted and uh, sent to the nucleus uh, to understand what happens in a network, or you can use them um, that you only have the nucleus, either cloud or on-premise based, but the sensor is built into the switch, which is of course much easier because then you don't need to do any mirroring anymore, and uh, uh, especially in the small networks, which is this is kind of no-brainer. Um, so what we are here going to next uh, demo is a use case where uh, NDR detects an inside attacker. It is not coming from outside. It is an inside worker that is using Polygon phones in the meeting rooms to record what people are speaking in one of the meeting rooms. So there are 10 meeting rooms. In one of them, they, they detect um, a suspicious behavior. And then in this demo, we are remedying it back via cloud vision that cloud vision actually guarantees this uh, phones out of the network by using this uh, macro segmentation group segmentation which i just described earlier so let's see where, how it goes then so in this case um, we receive all the network information with telemetry cloud vision and then this range picture here is the uh, nucleus thing so this is an IoT security segmentation example where we have um, uh, we have um, some something in a cloud and then we have Gmail and then we have Polycom uh, phone one of them. So what we use this um, nucleus and Ava to detect this uh, that one of the um, phones was sending email to, G to a Gmail account and then later on. It was also exfiltrating data, which is a file transfer. So why this phone is sending traffic to a Gmail attack, uh, account, that is suspicious. And then, uh, and it's profiling fingerprints of these, that how they, they are uh, behaving. And uh, this is completely background self-learning technology. So uh, um, without any, any guidance, let's start uh, sniffing what these phones are doing. And uh, here is an example that you have 10 other phones and none of them are sending any email ever to any, uh, any uh, other accounts or any other sites and especially outside of this company. So we, we only see that one of the phones acting normally the exactly the same way, same way as the other phones, but this time sending an email and ex exfiltrating data. So basically what we are doing here, we are... Um, then um, seeing that um, that we 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 can then uh, as as a as the remedy action we can um, guarantee this um, uh, device into a segment with group uh, segmentation that it cannot talk to any any anywhere else. So basically, here we have the the, the suspected phone here, and it's part of the Polygon um, uh, phones, and we. We make a change that um, it is not part of the Polygon, Polygon phone segment anymore. It go, belongs into a uh, guarantee segment. So basically, it means that after after this change, that uh, CloudVision automatically changes back to the network. We can see that 
uh, this phone is trying to talk to the internet that um, there are traffic destined destined there and uh, a little bit further in, in here we can see the statistics we have the flow information as uh, shown earlier as well that this um, um, polygon phone is trying to talk to this destination in, in the uh, in, uh, in the internet and we can in this page you can see there was uh, also that's by the way our, our CTO um, the um, uh, the view in topology so here um, in the right right corner here we have view in topology so if you wanted to evaluate this uh, flow that you can then visualize it too but this is enough here showing that um, yes we can see that uh, that even though now we have um, changed the group configuration of this phone um, so that it belongs now to current in group that it doesn't it, it is not successfully communicating anywhere else so this is an example that how we can um, then um, so basically this is the thing here that we didn't change its VLAN configuration, IP addressing, whatnot to guarantee it. Uh, we just changed the uh, the group, group con uh, construct that they, we had uh, predefined groups there, and one of those predefined groups is the um, uh, guarantee, which means that uh, this this is then um, uh, guaranteed that it cannot go to anywhere else. So here we are, all slide gone through. So any questions? I don't see any questions. So to conclude, as Marco said, we hope this webinar was helpful. Uh, thank you to all participants who join us today. Uh, have a good day and hope to see you next time. Bye. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay.